The Catholic Church's teaching against contraception is just another sign that the Catholic Church is antiquated and opposed to modern progress and technology. If God gave us the intelligence to control our fertility, we should be able to use it, right? Let's take a look. So we're continuing our series looking at questions from my book, Good News About Sex and Marriage. If you want to follow along, there's a link below where you can learn more. Also, if you're new to this channel, we're all about demonstrating how our earthly bodies reveal heavenly and divine mysteries. If you want to dive deeply into questions about what it means to be human, you're going to want to subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bell, share this with friends and family, leave a comment. All of that compels YouTube to proclaim the good news to a world desperately in need of it. So let's look at this question we are talking about. Is the church's teaching against contraception really a sign that the church is opposed to progress, medicine, technology? Let's look. As St. Paul VI said in his encyclical letter, Humanae Vitae, if you're not familiar with that document, it came out in 1968, and to the shock of the world, it reaffirmed the church's constant teaching that to render the sexual act sterile is a contradiction, a speaking against the truth of our sexuality, of our creation in the image and likeness of God, of the call to be fruitful and multiply. He said in that document, quote, the church is the first to praise and recommend the intervention of intelligence in a function which so closely associates the rational creature with his creator. But she affirms that this must be done with respect for the order established by God. Let's put it another way. It is certainly true that God gave us intelligence to understand how our fertility works. And yes, we should use it. But using our intelligence to act against God's design for our fertility is not an intelligent thing to do. Just because we can do something does not mean we should do something. We have this kind of manifest destiny when it comes to technology. We, we think that if we can do it, we should do it. Okay, just because we can doesn't mean we should. What is the intelligent use of our intelligence when it comes to understanding our fertility at the biological level? Let's press in here. Allow me to demonstrate the concept, I say, in this way. We'd all agree that the proper use of medicine and technology is to use it to aid the body to work the way it is intended to work. For example, we know that eyes are meant for seeing. We know that ears are meant for hearing. If medicine, technology, surgical procedure can give sight to a blind person or hearing to a deaf person, we are clearly using our intelligence intelligently. However, if we use medicine, technology, or surgical procedures to blind someone or to cause someone to go deaf, can we not recognize that that is not an intelligent use of our intelligence, right? My brothers and sisters, eyes are meant for seeing, ears are meant for hearing, lungs are meant for breathing. To act against that is not intelligent. Well, guess what? Genitals are meant for generating. <laughs> to use medicine, technology, or surgical procedures to render our genitals unable to generate is just as contrary to human health and bodily functioning as is rendering someone blind or deaf or unable to breathe. We are working in the exact wrong direction. Indeed, did you know that when the pill debuted in the 1960s, there were many doctors around the world who refused to prescribe the pill because they rightly recognized this as a violation of the Hippocratic Oath, which doctors used to take 
And part of that oath was the promise never to give a pill or potion or perform a procedure that worked against the health of the organism. My brothers and sisters, maybe the Catholic Church isn't crazy after all here. And maybe what we call reproductive health is in fact reproductive unhealth. It certainly is if we're using health care to render the body unable to do what it's meant to do. That's not healthy. That's unhealthy. As Professor Janet Smith points out, we take pills when we're sick. We have surgery to cure maladies and disease. Fertility is not a sickness. Fertility is not a disease. Infertility is the malady that needs to be cured. Now, later on in this series, we'll talk about Catholic teaching on reproductive technologies. Just a little preview of where we're going. We can say this. If medicine and technology can be used to aid sexual intercourse in achieving its natural end, which is a pregnancy, that's an intelligent use of our intelligence. But if we use technology to replace the sexual act as the means by which children are conceived, well, that's another question. And we will look at that in a series of future videos. Here's the final point. The only intelligent thing to do when there is an honest need to regulate fertility, in other words, you have an honest need to avoid a child, the only honest and intelligent thing to do here is to come to understand God's design for fertility and work with it. This is the intelligent use of our intelligence. To come to understand with our intelligence, with our reason, how God has created our fertility. And we have come to know through biology, through intelligence, through reason, through science, we have come to know that a man is always fertile. If he can produce sperm, he's fertile. We've come to know that a woman is only fertile for about one-third of the month. With that information, armed intelligently with that information, we can intelligently guide our choices and behavior towards respect for the way God made our fertility. When you're fertile, if you have a serious reason not to get pregnant, it is intelligent. It is wise, it is correct, indeed it is loving to refrain from that act that might lead to a child. That's what natural family planning is all about. Using our intelligence intelligently to work with God's design for our fertility and our sexuality rather than working against it. My brothers and sisters, I have so much more to share with you about how our bodies as male and female including our fertility, reveals heavenly divine mysteries. If you're interested in ongoing exclusive formation, I encourage you to check the link below about joining our patron community. And if you're interested in taking an online or in-person course with me or our other faculty members at the Theology of the Body Institute, check out the links below for our course schedule. Until next time, may our eyes be opened ever wider to the glory of God revealed through our bodies.